Hello friends, welcome to this video on correlation coefficient of a two dimensional random variable. We are going to estimate the correlation coefficient for a discrete case problem. Now we will see how to go about the problem as a road map. The correlation coefficient rho of x comma y is defined by covariance of x comma y by sigma x sigma y. So first this is going to be the base formula which is required for the estimation of our correlation coefficient. Here the numerated covariance of x comma y can be obtained using the formula e of x y minus e of x product e of y. Now the term involved the first term e of x y over here can be obtained by double summation x y into product of x y probability of x y. Now since this is going to be a two variable input x and y we have two summations one for the variation of x and the other one for the variation of y. The input x y is taken as such and it is going to be multiplied by the joint probability function of x and y together. Now next term involved over here is e of x. This e of x is obtained by summation x into probability of x which represents the mean of the random variable x. Now since only one random variable x is involved just one summation will do. The expected value is nothing but the input into p of x. p of x is nothing but the marginal probability function of your x. The third term involved over here e of y can be obtained using the formula summation y into p of y which represents the mean of the random variable y. Again only one variable is here therefore use only one summation the input into its corresponding probability uh, value that is the marginal probability function p of y. Now the numerator part can be taken care by these four quantities. Now coming to the denominator, we have sigma x product sigma y. What is sigma x? Sigma x represents the standard deviation of x. And standard deviation of x is obtained by square root of variance of x. So what is this variance of x? Variance of x is nothing but you can obtain it using the formula e of x square minus e of x the whole square. Now we need the first term over here e of x square. How to obtain this e of x square? e of x square is obtained as summation of the input x square into probability of x. Again keep in mind x is going to be only one random variable. x square doesn't mean that there are going to be two random variable. It is the square of the random variable x. Therefore since only one random variable is involved use only one summation the input into its corresponding probability function that is the marginal probability function of x. Now how to estimate the p of x which is involved over here in these of the quantity. Now probability of x equal to xi is the marginal probability function of x which is obtained by adding up all the elements along the j value keeping your i value fixed. And similarly if you want probability of y equal to yj you add up along all the i values keeping your j value fixed. So this will give you the marginal probabilities of your x and the random variable y. Now this estimates your sigma x. The second quantity sigma y can be obtained in a similar fashion like this by just merely replacing the variable x with that of your variable y. Okay. So we will try to apply the following steps in a problem and see how to estimate the value of a correlation coefficient. The problem is the joint probability mass function of the two dimensional random variable x and y is given as x takes the value minus 1 and plus 1, y takes the value 0 and 1. The probabilities, joint probabilities are 1 by 8, 3 by 8, 2 by 8, 2 by 8. We will have to find the correlation coefficient of the random variable x and y. As we have seen in the roadmap, the primary contribution is going to start from the probability functions p of x and p of y. So our first target is to estimate the value for p of x and p of y. So the first value taken by x is going to be minus 1. So I will estimate what is going to be probability of x taking the value minus 1. Over here minus 1 is fixed which is varying. The variation is along the y direction. So which is going to vary? y direction is going to vary. So it is going to vary in the direction of y. Therefore the variations are nothing but marked by 1 by 8 and 2 by 8. When we add up that is the summation over the script j. So when I take the summation over the script j, I am adding all the variation in j. So this is going to be 1 by 8 plus 2 by 8. So the answer for it will be equal to 3 by 8. 
So this is the probability that the random variable x takes the value minus 1. In a similar fashion, let us move to estimate what is the probability of x taking the second value called as 1. So when x takes the value 1, how to estimate it? Again, move in a fashion similar to it. The variation is in the direction of y. Taking the variation in the direction of y, this adds up to 3 by 8 plus 2 by 8. So when you add up 3 by 8 and 2 by 8, you will have it to be equal to 5 by 8. So we have obtained the marginal probabilities of the variable x. So this is done. Now moving to the marginal probabilities of the variable y. Over here, your j or your y is fixed and the variations are taken in the direction of x. So we will be estimating first the probability that y takes the value. What is the value first taken by y? y takes the value 0. How to go about it? y equal to 0 is fixed, which is going to vary over here. The variation is taken in the direction of your x. That is, your i varies over here. So the variation of i is counted for. So this is nothing but equal to 1 by 8 plus 3 by 8. So this contributes to 4 by 8. The next value taken by y is going to be probability that y takes the value 1. How to estimate about this? Now keep this y equal to 1 fixed. Again, take the variation in the direction of your x. So what happens over here? The next quantity taken by x are 2 by 8 and 2 by 8. So the values to be added are 2 by 8 plus 2 by 8. So that makes it as 4 by 8. So these quantities give me the marginal probabilities of the variable y. And these quantities give the marginal probability of the variable x. So the first two steps are over. We move on to the next step. What is the next step? It is the estimation of the mean of my x and the mean of the random variable y. How to estimate mean of x? It is summation x into probability of x. So how many x values we have? We have totally two values of x. So the first value taken by x is going to be equal to minus 1 and its corresponding probability is going to be given by 3 by 8. So minus 1 into 3 by 8 plus because it is summation, what is the next value taken by x? The next value taken by x is going to be 1 and the corresponding probability of it is going to be equal to 5 by 8. So corresponding probability is now multiplied. So it is 5 by 8. So you have the total value to be 5 by 8 minus 3 by 8 which is going to be equal to 2 by 8. We keep the denominator as such without any simplification so that taking LCM will be easy for us in the next cases. Now moving on to find the mean of the random variable y. Now the variations are taken in the y direction. So it is summation y into probability of y. The first value taken by y is going to be equal to 0. So it is 0 into the probability of y. What is the probability of y? The probability of y taking the value 0 is going to be equal to 4 by 8. So I multiply 0 with 4 by 8. And the second value taken by y is going to be equal to 1. So you take it as 1 into the corresponding probability taken by 1 will be equal to 4 by 8. So multiply with the corresponding probability 4 by 8. Now what happens is this will vanish because it is a product with 0 leaving you with 4 by 8. In a similar fashion we will try to evaluate what is the value of e of x square? So it is summation x square into probability of x. What is meant by x square? The first value taken by x is minus 1. Minus 1 the whole square into the corresponding probability of it is going to be equal to 3 by 8. In the second value taken by x is going to be equal to 1. So it is going to be 1 square into the corresponding probability taken by it will be equal to 5 by 8. So in this case we have minus 1 the whole square to be equal to 1 into 3 by 8 plus 1 into 5 by 8. So now this makes it as 8 divided by 8. So 8 divided by 8 makes it as 1. So this is going to be my value of e of x square. In a similar way, how can we estimate e of y square? Your e of y square can be obtained as summation y square into probability of y. So this is going to be 0 square into the corresponding probability 4 by 8 plus 1 square into probability 4 by 8. So obviously this vanishes leaving you with 4 by 8. So I have obtained the values of e of x, e of y 
e of x square e of y square using the marginal probabilities which we obtained in the last class last slide so now moving on to evaluate all these quantities we move on to the next quantity required e of x y what is e of x y there are going to be two variables involved over here hence we require two summations over here and now how to estimate the value of e of x y so the first value taken by x is going to be equal to minus 1 and the value taken by y will be equal to 0 and what about the corresponding value taken by p of x comma y it is going to be 1 by 8 so i write it as minus 1 into 0 into the corresponding probability 1 by 8 so x into y into probability of x comma y so it is minus 1 0 1 by 8 we move on to the next term what is the value taken by x in the next stage in the next stage it takes 1 and the value 0 with the corresponding probability what is going to be the probability over here the probability over here will be equal to 3 by 8 hence you write it as the value 1 into 0 into the corresponding probability 3 by 8 moving on to the next combination now x takes the value minus 1 and y takes the value 1 now what will happen to the corresponding probability of it the probability is given by minus 1 into 1 and the probability is 2 by 8 so we move on to fill it minus 1 into 1 into the probability 2 by 8 next the last value taken by x is 1 and the value taken by y is going to be 1 so it is 1 into 1 and what is going to be the probability of the two values as a joint function this is going to be equal to 2 by 8 so multiply by 2 by 8 now wherever you have 0 this quantity vanishes leaving you with just this quantity minus 1 into 1 so it is minus 1 into 2 by 8 plus 1 into 1 is going to be 1 times of 2 by 8 so this minus 2 by 8 and plus 2 by 8 vanishes cancelling of one another giving you the final value as 0. Now substituting all the answers which we have found out in the value for the covariance. Covariance of x comma y now evaluates as e of x y which we just now estimated equal to 0 minus what was the value of e of x we evaluated in the prior stage the value of e of x is going to be equal to 2 by 8 and the value of e of y is estimated as 4 by 8 so we have this to be substituted as 2 by 8 product 4 by 8 now we know that 4 2s are 8 so this 8 can be cancelled off with this 8 over here leaving you with an answer of minus 1 by 8 so the covariance of the random variable x comma y has been estimated as minus 1 by 8 so my numerator is done let us now move on to the denominator denominator has two portions one is sigma x the other one is sigma y the values are evaluated in a similar fashion sigma x is going to be root over variance of x and what is variance of x it is e of x square minus e of x the whole square we already evaluated e of x square e of x square is evaluated as 1 so you move to substitute e of x square is 1 and e of x is going to be 2 by 8 so substituting these values this is going to be equal to 1 minus this is e of x the whole square so it is going to be equal to 1 by 4 the whole square e of x was e of x was 2 by 8 which can be reduced to 1 by 4 so it is going to be 1 by 4 the whole square so you take over here 2 by 8 is that 2 by 8 i am reducing it as 1 by 4 so it is 1 minus 1 by 4 the whole square so it is 1 minus 1 divided by 4 square is 16. So this is 16 minus 1. 16 minus 1 makes it as 15 divided by 16. This is my variance of x. So what will be sigma x? Sigma x will be square root of 15 divided by square root of 16. This is for my variable x. Now let me evaluate the same quantity for the variable y. So what will be your sigma y? Sigma y will be equal to root over variance of y. Now how about this variance of y? Variance of y is got as e of y square minus 
e of y d whole square and what we know about e of y square let us go to the previous slide to get it e of y square is estimated as 4 by 8 4 by 8 can be reduced as 1 by 2 and we know that this is going to be my e of y square so i resubstitute is e of y square as 1 by 2 minus what was e of y e of y was estimated as 4 by 8 again this can be reduced to 1 by 2 so now on reduction this gives me 1 by 2 the whole square so it is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 4 so 4 makes it lcm half minus quarter is this is going to give me 1 by 4 as my answer this is going to be my variance of y so from this what can we say about sigma y that is the standard deviation of y it is going to be square root of your 1 by 4 so it is square root of 1 divided by square root of 4 now every answer is going to be required or quantities have been estimated we move on to the final substitution the last quantity required is our row of x comma y which is given by covariance of x comma y by sigma x into sigma y the value of covariance was estimated as minus 1 by 8 move on to substitute the numerator as minus 1 divided by 8 now for the sigma x value sigma x was root 15 by root 16 so this is going to be root 15 root 16 can be taken to the numerator so now this becomes the second quantity what is the third quantity sigma y what was our sigma y square root of 1 by square root of 4 so this becomes now square root of 1 divided by square root of 4 now let us simplify the quantity square root of 16 is going to be equal to 4 this is again square root of 4 which is going to be equal to 2 this is going to be 8 in the new denominator with a square root of 15 and square root of 1 is going to be equal to 1 now this 4 2s are 8 can be cancelled off with this 8 leaving you the final value as 1 divided by square root of 15 so the value of correlation between the two variables x and y given in a discrete format is e of the value minus 1 by square root of 15 or you can use your calculator to estimate this in the decimal format as minus 0 0.258 now to go about one more step ahead what is going to be the nature of the relationship between the variables x and y since we have the value to be negative in nature we say that the correlation is going to be negatively correlated negatively correlated what does negative correlation mean to us it means that as my x increases my y decreases or the case that as my case x decreases my y increases it is going to be of opposite trend so the variables x and y are going to be inversely related to one another inversely related to one another so an increase in one variable causes a decrease in the other one this is what is the inference of the negative sign over here if it is positive then you call it positive correlation which means with the increase in x y also increases and with a decrease in x y also decreases so the relation is going to be direct relationship over here the answer is negative hence we conclude that the relationship is going to be inversely related thank you